All right, in this lesson, I wanted to talk about cell types and cell modes. So as a review of the previous lesson, we put in this uh, expression within our cell 1 plus 1, and when we executed the cell with shift enter, we got the result directly output below it. You'll also notice that the number here in the box to the left changed. That number basically indicates the order of, an ex of execution within the notebook. So this indicates that this is the 10th operation within the Jupyter Notebook. If I execute the cell again, you'll see that that number will increase to 11. So this is just keeping track of what order that cell represents in the total execution order of the notebook. But we got this result of two. And basically what happened here is that the notebook interpreted this cell as valid Python code and it executed it. Well, as it turns out, a cell does not have to be strictly limited to Python code. Cells can actually have different types. And you'll see here on this menu that we have code written here, and that basically means that this uh, content right here is being interpreted as code, but it doesn't have to be. We can designate the cell as being of a different type. So if I click this menu here and expose my drop-down options, we'll see a couple of different options available. And the only one that I really want to focus on is Markdown. So if I select Markdown and click it, you'll see that this will change. And when I now re-execute the cell by pressing Shift-Enter, you'll see that instead of evaluating to 2 and outputting that below the cell, it's just going to show me 1 plus 1. So if I go back in here, you'll see it'll switch to Markdown. Markdown is just a lightweight language that's used for things like text forming, for formatting and aesthetics. You can use it to do things like create headers in your notebook or create bulleted lists or even things like embedding a video or embedding a sound file. So Markdown basically accomplishes everything outside of code. So the advantage of Markdown is that you kind of can offer descriptions or long paragraphs about what you're doing or headers or sections and then the rest of the cells uh, are basically the Python code. All this basically means the key takeaway is that cells can be of different types. They can be either code or markdown. And when you execute them with shift enter, the result that you're going to get is going to be dependent on what that cell type is currently listed as. So in case you're executing a cell that's valid Python code and you're getting an output instead of the actual proper result, that might be because the cell is being rendered as markdown. So keep your eye on this bar whenever you see things like that. Or in reverse, if you're writing something in markdown like this and you're executing it, and you're saying, hey, why am I not getting two? That's because this cell is being read as Markdown and not Python. Now, in addition to the cell types, we also have the cell modes. So the Jupyter Notebook has two different mode types available. The first is edit mode, and the second is command mode. So if I double click into this cell right now, you'll see that we have now the capacity to type. I can see that I can you know, press escape and type some random characters in here and so on. So whenever I'm in, in a cell, I'm in edit mode, which basically means I'm able to edit its contents. The other indicator that tells us that we're in edit mode is this green outline around a cell. Whenever I'm in edit mode, everything that I do on the keyboard is going to be interpreted as if I'm typing a character. In comparison, the second mode that we have available is command mode. Command mode can be triggered by pressing the escape key. So when I press escape, you'll see that the outline of the cell will switch from green to blue. There it is. And whenever a cell is outlined in blue, that indicates that I'm currently in command mode. Now command mode is sort of operating on the kind of top level or the top layer of the notebook. So when we're in command mode and we do things on the keyboard, they're not going to be interpreted as literal characters. They are, they're going to be interpreted as keyboard shortcuts. So for example, one of the keyboard shortcuts that are available to us in command mode is available in the A key, which is short for above, and when we press the A key in command mode, it's going to create a new cell above the current cell. So if I press A, you can see my new cell appears directly above. And again, if I were to just go back into edit mode, rather, with this green outline and just press A, it's going to be literally interpreting it as um, you know, the character A that I'm typing here. So again, sometimes you might run into issues because you might be trying a shortcut on your keyboard, but it's not going to get you the result uh, that you want. The likely answer there is that you're in edit mode and that content is simply being typed somewhere into a cell and it's not being operated on the entire notebook as a whole. So two things to keep track of uh, just to review everything we've discussed so far. We have the cell type, which can be either Python code or Markdown. 
And we also have the cell mode, which can be ed either edit mode, which means you're in a cell and editing its contents, or command mode, which basically tells you that you're kind of on the top level of the notebook and operating on the notebook as a whole. The things you generally do in command mode uh, operate on the entire notebook. So in addition to creating cells and deleting cells, doing things like navigation or cell deletion or cell movement, moving a cell up or, or down, uh, those are things that you do in command mode. They affect the entire notebook's look or the entire notebook as a whole. Um, and I just wanted to conclude as well here by showing you two different shortcuts that are available in the command mode. So I'm going to press the escape key here to go back into command mode. I can tell by that blue outline. And two options that are available to us as keyboard shortcuts is switching a cell to either Markdown or to Python. So right now you can see the cell is Markdown. This is listed in the drop down right here. And the shortcut to turn a cell into a Python code cell is the Y key. So if I press Y in command mode, you can see that the uh, option right here is going to switch to code. The option to go to Markdown is the M key, which is the first letter of Markdown. So I'm still in command mode, I'm still in blue, and if I press M, you'll see that this will switch up here to Markdown. So you can use those keyboard shortcuts in command mode to perform operations like this instead of using your mouse and having to you know, go to the toolbar. So becoming f very proficient at all the keyboard shortcuts that are available to you will greatly reduce your dependency on the toolbars here and, and make you a more efficient user of Jupyter Notebooks. But this is just a general uh, introduction to cell types and cell modes. We still have plenty to dive into about a Jupyter Notebook and how it operates. But in your free time, feel free to just execute a couple cells, try executing a few uh, Python commands, try executing uh, some Markdown commands. There's extensive documentation available online on how you can do things like headers in Markdown. As a hint, all it really is is just uh, hashtags. So if I do something like header here and press Shift Enter to execute, it's basically just going to create a big, bold section header. Um, but feel free to just Google Markdown you know, syntax and you'll get a list. It's very simple. It's just using common characters like dashes and asterisks to bold text and italicize it and format it and create bullets and that kind of stuff. So play around with executing some cells as Markdown, some cells as Python, and just keeping in mind how those cell types and those cell modes operate within a Jupyter Notebook.